Welcome back to the channel guys and today I can finally talk about NVIDIA's Ada Lovelace RTX 4000 series. We have been waiting a very long time for an official announcement, official pricing and official um, a launch date and all of that is now here. It's crazy with the PC gaming. Um, you get nothing for months and months on end. Leakers do their best to drip feed us with information. And then it just suddenly just goes boom and it and everything is just laid bare. And obviously until independent reviews, we have to go by what NVIDIA says. But let's just go through the main talking points. RTX 4090, 1599, available October 12th, with an estimation of performance 2x of the RTX 3090 Ti and a recommended power supply of 850 watt. And I believe it's even made on the 4 nanometer process by TSMC, so that was surprising. RTX 4080, 16 gigabyte model, 1199, promised performance of around two times RTX 3080 Ti, recommended power supply unit 750 watt. Now this is where Nvidia kind of flatters to deceive. They also have an RTX 4080, 12 gigabyte model for 899, pricey more pricey than I would be comfortable with spending, especially when it's not an even the same GPU as the 16 gigabyte version and performance to be more than a 3090 Ti. So when you think about it, yes, you're getting a better GPU than a 3090 Ti with, with half the VRAM, but at the same time, you, you're calling it the same thing as the 4080 16 gigabyte version, which is a different card entirely. We'll get into that more in a second. So let's talk a little bit about the RTX 4090 in particular. NVIDIA Ada Lovelace, that is the architecture built on TSMC's 4 nanometer process, 76 billion transistors, which is just an insane number to even con consider to fit into one little piece of silicon. It's just ridiculous, but it's been done. Um, GDDR6X again, um, whatever speed that will be running at is yet to be clarified. I hope it's faster than the 21 GBPS that you get with the RTX 3090 Ti, um, but we'll wait and see. So some of the highlights of the architect are shaders, new streaming multiprocessor, 90 shader T-flops. We heard a number in rumors that it has been now confirmed and, um, Jensen claims 2x rasterization performance over the RTX 3090. 90 T flops would and should do that, but we have to see. Again, let's uh, take everything with a pinch of salt until we see some concrete um, independent reviews, but we can only um, speak on what we've been given for now at least. And two times power efficiency. <laughs> Who would have expected that? We had very, we had some concerns about our draw and um, you know we heard some horror stories but 850 watt power supply recommendation for the founders edition at least is not too bad i mean my tough oc rtx 1390 ti recommends i believe a 1000 watt power supply so it's nothing that we haven't already seen so it's not too much of a worry so that that's good to see as far as ray tracing goes it's now going to be using third gen rt cores 200 RT T flops, whatever that means, and 2x ray trace, ray triangle intersection. Deep learning, fourth gen tensor cores, 1400 tensor T flops with optical flow accelerator, whatever that is. Um, I'm not too big on all of the T flop and or what that actually translates to, but they all sound like really big numbers compared to what Ampere was offering. So um, let's see how that actually transforms into practical application with rendering um, high resolution videos 
etc etc apparently it's meant to have 2x export performance so all you adobe premiere davinci resolve guys should be able to uh, measure that and confirm if that is the case we'll have to see i also want to talk about the kind of connectivity you can expect with the rtx 4000 series or 40 series so up to 4k 12-bit hdr at 240 hertz with DisplayPort 1.4a plus DSC. So 240 Hertz with HDR at 12 bit at 4K. That's just stuff of dreams. I wouldn't even consider um, what that would even be like if you could actually max out that frame rate. You can also expect to um, have 8K 12 bit at HDR um, 60 Hertz with DisplayPort 1.4a plus DSC or HDMI 2.1 plus DSC with dual DisplayPort 1.4a plus DSC up to 8K with HDR at 120 Hertz. So breaking that 8K 60 Hertz limit with dual um, DisplayPort 1.4a. I'm not too sure how that configuration would work, but it is possible apparently with the RTX 40,000 series GPUs. Now, um, one thing that's actually interesting to note is what I've noticed as well is that none of these cards seem to have a um, an NVLink connector port on the cards at all. So it seems NVIDIA have completely done away with multi-GPU configurations with um, Ada Lovelace. And that's mainly probably due to most de developers not programming for it. And uh, just because most of these cards are gonna be four slot out the box, which is going to cause a lot of compatibility issues. And we're already expecting a minimum of 850 watt power supply. So that's going to cause some challenges as well for power supply. So it's probably the right decision in the long run. But if you're someone that, you know, is a professional and uh, renders a lot, maybe you could leverage those dual GPUs more effectively. And maybe that might be a deal breaker for you. But personally, I think 14090 will serve a lot of people for a long time. So. I'm very, very excited and I'm so happy that it's such a quick turnover, October the 12th. I wasn't expecting to get my hands on these cards so quickly and um, I've got a few pictures of some of the aftermarket cards now. So if you want to have a look, this is the MSI range. You can see that the Supreme has a dual radiator, so 240 millimeter radio radiator AIO design. And of course, they've got their normal Supreme X triple fan cooler. Um, the other um, variations of their product line, so the Ventus, um, that's what they got going on. If you want to take a look at the new Asus cars, I'm a little bit underwhelmed by this. I'm a little bit shocked, actually, because the Strix, one of the most good-looking cars of the Ampere series, Looks absolutely shocking. I am not a fan of this design, I have to say. The tough doesn't look too great either, but you know, I like Asus. Um, both of the cards I've owned have been solid, so I've got no problem spending my money with them. But aesthetically, um, I'm not impressed at all. So of course, let's now talk about Nvidia's main feature and potentially is exclusive to the RTX 40 series, and that is NVIDIA DLSS 3. DLSS, of course, is their deep learning super sampling tech, which upscales an image via AI-driven uh, means to create um, uh, basically the same image as the native and providing a performance uplift. That's the aim. So let's read word for word from the NVIDIA website, DLSS 3 with optical multi-frame generation, multiplies performance on GeForce RTX 40 series graphics cards. So they're emphasizing that it is for RTX 40 series cards, and I, I, I would assume that is an exclusive feature. It goes on to say, by using AI to generate more frames, DLSS 3 analyzes sequential frames and motion data from the new optical flow accelerator, something that seems to be added to the 40 series um, architecture. And it says the optical flow accelerator in GeForce RTX 40 series GPUs to create additional high quality frames. Again, pointing to it being exclusive to RTX 40 series. So 
Turing and Ampere guys may be left out on this one, unfortunately. Now it also goes on to say NVIDIA DLSS 3 also includes NVIDIA Reflex. So each of these titles will be even more responsive for all GeForce RTX gamers. Now they are actually gonna release 35 um, games and apps coming um, to support um, DLSS 3 in October. And um, CD Projekt Red as well are actually going to go on to enhance um, Cyberpunk to take advantage of uh, their new ray tracing overdrive mode. So that will be an interesting thing to, to test out as well. So lots happening and very, very fast. October the 12th, I wasn't expecting the cards to be available so quickly and... Um, Nothing that I'm complaining about, of course. I've been waiting a long time for this. So um, I'm interested to see what the AIB models will charge. NVIDIA has the luxury of kind of charging us a cheaper rate. So everyone's, I wouldn't say happy about the 1600 price point, but at least they've come to kind of accept that this is what it was potentially going to cost. But AIBs may mark that up by an extra 400 and we were looking at 2K. AIB model so it could be um, a very very small club when it comes to people that are able to buy these cards so we'll see but I've definitely got my eyes on um, I'm not too concerned I may even get a reference design because ultimately I want to water cool my card anyway so I'm not that concerned about what card I get but I'm definitely getting one on day one 100% so I spoke a little bit earlier about Nvidia flattering to deceive and that is in relation to the RTX 4080 one card, the 16 gigabyte model being sold at 11.99 and the 12 gigabyte model being sold at, of course, 8.99. Again, that's a little bit excessive for what really works out to be um, an RTX 4070 class card, in my opinion. Um, so let's look at the specifics now in terms of specs. RTX 4080 16 gigabyte model, CUDA cores, 9,728 in comparison to the RTX 4080's 12 gigabyte 76 uh, 80 CUDA cores. So that's a good chunk difference and that actually translates to making the card 50 T-flops with the 16 gigabyte version versus 40 T-flops with the uh, 12 gigabyte version. So that's a fair difference in performance and it goes further than that. Um, 256 bit bus for the uh, RTX 4080 16 gigabyte version, but a 192 bit bus for the 12 gigabyte version for 900 pounds. That, that's just ridiculous. I mean, it's not the same card in any way, shape, or form. It goes even further 23 gigabytes per second in terms of memory speed for the uh, 4080 16 gigabyte version and 21 gigabytes per second for the 12 gigabyte version. Now that's not slow because that's what the 3090 Ti is running at, but still it translates into uh, 736 uh, GB uh, S in terms of uh, bandwidth for the 16 gigabyte version to the 12 gigabytes 504 GB S. So that's a considerable difference in, in uh, bandwidth. So they're not the same card but it all depends. Do you want to spend an extra uh, $300 to get the full fat 480? Um, it's just, it doesn't deserve to have the, uh, to be in the class of an 80 range um, card, in my opinion. Nvidia have done this in the past. I can't remember which card it was. I think they did uh, this with uh, a lower end card. I can't remember which one it was. Uh, one card had um, more CUDA cores than the other but they were named the same. So it's not something that NVIDIA is new to. And uh, you just need to be more vigilant when you are making your, your purchases because you may get a little less than you bargained for. Um, but other than that, I'm excited. I am I am so stoked to getting uh, my hands on this 4090 just to see everything it can do. And, um, and if it lives up to the expectations, I was pleasantly surprised when I saw Cyberpunk 2077, and now I have actually tracked down the settings that were being used. It was played at 4K with all settings maxed out natively 
on a 3019, you were getting around 24 gig of, um, 24 frames per second, which is about right. They enabled DLSS free and that jumped up to 90 FPS plus, but it, it does say that DLSS was used at the performance preset. So I'm gonna run DLSS on the performance preset now. And uh, let's see how much FPS I'm getting because it may not be a massive increase as as we're seeing um, or led to believe it is. So I'll play the rest of my uh, gameplay here with uh, DLSS at performance preset and uh, you guys can observe the frame rate for yourself. But apart from that, guys, that is pretty much it. What do you guys think of the news from NVIDIA? Are you going to get yourself an RTX 4090 or are you going to wait for the RTX 4080? which we don't have a confirmation date for, or are you gonna wait for AMD in November with RDNA 3? There's so much choice, which is always a great thing. And I think we're gonna have an entertaining year. So thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.